a Donald Trump also tried to uh, cheer the world up, first by announcing that he's going to run for president, which is a stupid idea by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, then he announced he was willing to spend $600 million of his own money on it, which makes it instantly even stupider. And he even announced this by saying, well, that's one of the nice things. I mean, part of the beauty of me is that I'm very rich. And that's, that's almost his first presidential slogan right there, Andy. Part of the beauty of me is that I'm very rich. Trump 2012. <laughs> what a chat-up line to an entire nation. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that is exactly what it is. He, part of the beauty of me is I'm very rich. In... Trump 2012. Can I buy you all a drink? <laughs> I don't know if you're trying to get into 300 million people's pants simultaneously. You know, that is a, that is a, strong, a strong start. There are worse ways to chat a country up. He, he went on to say, you know, the funny thing is, I don't actually get along with rich people. I get along with the middle class and the poor people better than I get along with rich people. Wow. You must really not get along with rich people then, because everyone else thinks you are a colossal tool. <laughs> Trump then handily put the cherry on the crazy cake when he expressed a bit of doubt over whether President Obama was actually born in the United States. He said, the reason I have a little doubt, just a little, is because he grew up and nobody knew him. So what better way to launch your presidential campaign, Andy, than to accuse the president of not being American in the face of all evidence to the contrary? So, you know, let's all credit Trump for trying to bring a bit of bright side to the darkness this week. Completely unnecessary birth certificate news now. And Andy, the Kenyan president of the United <laughs> States successfully faked and released his fake American birth certificate this week <laughs> to the relief of everyone who's asleep in the face of the truth. That is how many internet posts reported the re-release of Barack Obama's Hawaiian Certificate of Live Birth this week. And the issue of whether or not the president, who was definitely born in the United States, was definitely born here or not, even though he definitely was, has been stoked up recently by Donald Trump in his ongoing will-I-won't-I I dalliance with running for president himself. So after the birth certificate was released, you might have expected Donald Trump to eat some humble pie. But if you expected that, then you're clearly not familiar with Senor Trump, because <laughs> he's very much allergic to that particular brand of pie. <laughs> in fact, moments after the birth certificate was released, Trump landed in New Hampshire and went straight to an impromptu press conference where the first things out of his mouth were, Today, I'm very proud of myself, because I've accomplished something that no one else has been able to accomplish. Now, to be honest, I think that's how he starts every day. <laughs> I think he looks into the mirror and repeats that to himself three times before brushing his teeth and ironing his hair. <laughs> and well, I, think, I think the thing that he manages to accomplish every day is seeing himself in the mirror and not screaming. So, <laughs> fair play to him. No one else can do that. He then went on to talk at length about how, how he'd just turned up in a helicopter. And <laughs> what a helicopter it was. It was black and red. And he the best colour for any helicopter in the late 1980s. And... <laughs> It also had Trump emblazoned on the side of it. Um, he, he said he was honoured to have played such a big role in hopefully, hopefully, getting rid of this issue. Now we can have a look, he said. We can have a look at it to see if it's real. He's incredible, Andy. His capacity for bullshit <laughs> would either make him the perfect president or the perfect landfill site. <laughs> I just can't work out which yet. Such a fine line, so often. I'm fascinated by this, uh, this term, birtherism. Mm-hmm. Uh, which makes it sound like a branch of philosophy, a school of thought that holds that where conclusive evidence verifiably exists to prove a known fact, that evidence can be disproved if it is repeatedly and groundlessly rubbished through a sufficient number of media outlets. And that basically, I think, is what John Stuart Mill would have ended up saying if he hadn't popped his clogs, John. It was, he was basically heading in that direction. A President Obama himself had alluded to Donald Trump uh, during his quick press conference to release the birth certificate, referring to him as a carnival barker. And to that I say this, that's future president carnival barker to you. <laughs> Have some f***ing respect. There was a, uh, an article about him on uh, the Al Jazeera website in which the journalist <laughs> described Donald Trump as, quotes, the living embodiment of every degrading aspect of American <laughs> culture. <laughs> He would take that as a compliment. <laughs> but, I mean, that does. You know, when you, th when you read those words, John, and oh, you think of great. his impending presidential bid, the living embodiment of every degrading <laughs> aspect of American culture, he is going to be very hard to beat, John, with <laughs> that sure behind is. him. 
That is vote winning stuff. That should be his campaign slogan. <laughs> Get it's that worked. across a bumper sticker. It's worked before, uh, <laughs> twice in the last three elections. <laughs> Trump uh, now also wants uh, the president to release his college records as well. And, you know, I guess President Obama could do that too, but you know, where does this end exactly? Do we want his intimate red medical records as well? Is that enough transparency? Do we want to insert a microscopic camera into his anus just so we can have a look around and check that he's not harbouring any Muslim extremists up there? Is that too much to ask in the pursuit of national security, Andy? And if Obama refuses to do it, the only question is, what's he hiding up there then? <laughs> Just let us put a camera up your ass and prove that you have nothing to hide. I will not accept him as my president, John, until I have seen verifiable footage of his mother and his father humping without using any protection. <laughs> On the appropriate date in whenever it was. 1960 or whatever. Trump... Trump, obviously, should also now be subjected to exactly the same level of scrutiny. America should get to see all of Trump's financial records. They should get to see what's underneath his profoundly unsettling hair. My guess is that there's a tattoo of his own face up there. And we should get to see his internet history as well. In fact, that is that truly is the most telling thing that any of us could demand in the name of transparency from a future leader. True transparency means everyone should have to release their personal internet history. Because I bet, I bet that Donald Trump Googles his own name a lot. <laughs> I bet that 60% of his searches on the internet. I would, I'd also love to see President Obama's internet history. I, I think it would be very illustrative to see the internet history of all presidents from now on. If Obama ever placed an online order for ping pong balls, I'd like to see that. <laughs> I, I'd like to see if he's ever uh, online commentating on a forum about a, a Jonas Brothers blogs under a fake name. I'd like to see if he was hacking into his daughter's Facebook account to check what they're up to. <laughs> I'd like to see if he ever looked up the batting average of Jason Bay against left-handed pitchers and how long he spent looking at that page. I'd like to know if he'd ever seen a video of a skateboarder taking a huge knot shot from a telephone pole and how many times he'd then re-watched that clip. <laughs> I think that would tell you more about a president's character than any questions about policy. In fact, Andy... <laughs> I think one debate per presidential cycle should just involve a moderator pulling out a piece of internet history at random from a candidate and simply saying, explain this. <laughs> oh, uh, well, that's a good question. I, I guess I was intrigued to see whether or not Natalie Portman had ever done a nude scene in a movie. <laughs> Very well. And to your opponent, explain this. Oh, yeah, well, yeah, that was not a serious inquiry. I just wanted to know hypothetically, whether they made female SS uniforms in my size. <laughs> God, was that, I tell you, I, 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 was that Nixon and Lyndon Johnson? <laughs> Good spot, Andy. Good spot. Carl Rove, the top political advisor to President George Bush and total <laughs> c Qualified c he he call, he has called Trump a joke candidate. But I'll tell you what, Carl. I'll tell you what, it's nice to have once in a while. Jokes, Carl. <laughs> they're fun. Sometimes they're not in great taste, sure. And sometimes they're completely pointless. But they're nice to laugh at occasionally. And the truth is, Trump would clearly make a catastrophic president. But he could yet offer one of the greatest, funniest, most ridiculous presidential runs in American history. And it would be so sad if he denied the world that kind of pure, uncomplicated joy. <laughs> so well, He doesn't sorry. have all the classic uh, characteristics of a presidential candidate. Um, he's had his worth estimated at $3 billion, but mm -hmm. also has... You know, he's, he's danced the dance with bankruptcy on a yes. number of occasions. He's he also, tangoed, yeah. He's also appeared in Home Alone 2. Mm -hmm. He apparently <laughs> failed to vote in New York primary elections for over 20 years, so mm -hmm. massive democracy fan. He also owns the Miss Universe franchise and yes. sells, sells his own brand of vodka. <laughs> That's so right. are any of those compatible with being president? Well, I've, I've got some more facts for you here, Andy. Trump does not shake hands because he has a fear of germs. Now... That is something of a handicap to running for office. Is he also allergic to babies' heads? Because there is nothing looks more elitist than spraying your hands with disinfectant immediately after touching a potential voter. <laughs> Here's another fact. On April the 7th of this year, Trump filed to trademark the phrase success by Trump 
for use in selling, and I quote, cologne, perfume, fragrances, aftershave lotions, skin moisturiser, shampoo, conditioner, deodorant, soaps for hand, face and body, body powder, <laughs> bath oil, bath gel, bath salts and bubble bath. I do hope that in anticipation of his presidential run, Andy, he's also trademarked failure by Trump as well. <laughs> because if he hasn't, I'm tempted to. And while I'm at it, I might also trademark bankruptcy by Trump too. <laughs> in case I ever want to make a shower gel. As you mentioned, he already has Trump the fragrance and Trump vodka. And again, let's in the future now make sure that every potential presidential candidate has their own line of fragrances. It just makes <laughs> sense. You can tell a lot about a candidate from whether they like to use base notes of sandalwood or not. <laughs> Indecision by Calvin Coolidge. <laughs> I think the most telling thing you can know about Donald Trump as a man comes from this exchange he had a couple of days ago in New Hampshire, uh, which I read about it, uh, in an article. I think it really gets across the kind of human being you're dealing with in a very concise, very compact way. I quote, Donald Trump spent a few minutes shaking hands at a Portsmouth diner, but spent little time in conversation. Passing by a table of older men, he waved and said, Why aren't you at work? <laughs> Or, already a great manner for people there, Andy. <laughs> Did he whack them with a stick as well? Or Wh hold a gold handkerchief over his nose as he spoke to them? <laughs> anyway, it goes on. We're retired, answered the group of former workers at the Portsmouth Naval Shipyard. Don't touch Medicare, right? Trump said, moving on without waiting for an answer. <laughs> Trump 2012, Andy. It would be too fun for him not to do this. <laughs> Terrible, terrible news in American politics this week, Andy. If you were watching, if anyone was watching MSNBC last Monday, and statistically they weren't, <laughs> you'd have heard that Zing. Donald Trump... <laughs> yeah, take that. Other, Donald Trump, otherwise known as the Donald or the real Mr. T, <laughs> will not be running for President of the United States. And I guess when it came down to it, America just wasn't ready for a gold president. <laughs> I can't believe he's done this to the country he claims to love, Andy. I mean, sure, he's done it before. He's flirted with running in both 2004 and 2008 and pulled out at the last minute. But this time, it seemed different. You're a tease, Mr. Trump. You offer yourself up for a full presidential run, then suddenly announce that you're not interested. You just blue-balled America. <laughs> and sure, Andy, yes, he was down to only 8% support in the polls last week, but that's just because they weren't asking the right question. Pollsters were asking, do you want Trump to be president, <laughs> not do you want him to run for president? <laughs> Amer America never wanted Trump to actually be president. They just wanted to have fun watching him try. <laughs> Is that so bad? With the way the world is, do we not deserve something like this? It's not just that he was a joke candidate, Andy. It's that he was the perfect joke. <laughs> he was a series of thousands of jokes all wrapped up in a golden buffoon. <laughs> it's like Brit in the Royal Wedding. We knew that was stupid. We knew it looked ludicrous and that it was an embarrassing waste of money. But we also knew how much it would entertain the world. Well, America has Trump. Trump is America's royal wedding, and he's just left them at the altar, Andy. And there is a void in his place now. None of the other Republican nominees have his sweet, sweet way with words. Do you really think that any of them would deliver a speech about China, as Donald Trump did, and say, and I quote, they want to go in and raise the price of oil because we have nobody in Washington that sits back and says, you're not going to raise that f***ing price, you understand me? <laughs> Closing his speech by saying, listen, you mother... Because <laughs> we're going to tax you 25%. <laughs> of course not. He's a foul-mouthed poet, Andy. Mr. Trump, you had me at raise that f***ing price. <laughs> His voice is like m***ing honey, Andy. And I am a m***ing bee. <laughs> Currently... Rick Perry, Rick Santorum, John Huntsman, Newt Gingrich, Mitt Romney and Ron Paul are still in the race, with Donald Trump hovering on the sidelines in a solid gold helicopter, threatening to run as an independent. <laughs> and I hope he does, Andy. That's my great hope for 2012. Why? Because America deserves to have Donald Trump run for president. People here work hard, Andy, and they deserve to have something uncomplicated and joyful to watch on the news when they get home. Oh, What's Donald Trump been doing on the campaign trail? I bet it's been stupid. <laughs> Let me kick off my shoes and enjoy this. <laughs> yeah, but 
I don't know, that just sounds like a, you know, the script of a film, John, <laughs> which ends up with Donald Trump in the White House, <laughs> coating it with gold. Now, as you would uh, probably have expected, uh, we had an absolute deluge of emails about the rise of Trump, um, including one pointing out, John, that I believe before we went on our break, you said that you quite hoped he would run for president and basically pinning the blame on on you. Did I say that, Andy? I think was that that might be in the context of thinking it would be fun if he ran for president. And I'm you know, more than happy to say that I was completely wrong about that. <laughs> um, you know, there are certain things that you wish for in life that you should not be given, Andy. <laughs> and it turns out that was one of them. You know, I was playing with fire and it turns out this country has got singed and it may yet go up in a gigantic inferno. Uh, your uh, your piece uh, from your show on on, on Trump has uh, been a significant success on both both sides of the Atlantic and uh, elsewhere. And uh, you, you look, what's the hashtag? Make Donald Trump again. Yes, which was his uh, original family name. It was yeah, he's generations ago um, in Germany. Surprise, surprise. <laughs> uh, the the Trumps were you know happily keeping themselves to themselves, uh, and then they changed their name to Trump and uh, then eventually emigrated to the US. And, you know, the rest is really depressing history. <laughs> the rest is shiny golden history. Well, if only it were history rather than news and the... <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Yeah, depressing current affairs. <laughs> but uh, this email came in from Pat McMorran, uh, who asked, who would win in a fight and why? One Drumpf-sized penis or 100 penis-sized Drumpfs? One Drumpf-sized penis? Well, there's, well it's, Drumpf is not really a unit of measurement. That doesn't really make... I mean, I know it sounds like it means something, but it doesn't mean anything. And I guess that's the perfect analogy for Donald Trump, in a way. Because he did, he did refer to his junk, didn't he, in, a, in one of the recent... He did. He did. He, he said that there was no problem with his penis, in uh, slightly different words. That happened in a presidential debate, Andy. That's the world in which we live now. Well, I mean, it was... <laughs> we're, we're getting so close to the actual idiocracy of just a penis measuring contest. <laughs> Flop it on the podium. Thum. <laughs> well, I think the gentleman to the left has it by half an inch. <laughs> well, reminiscent of uh, the 1860s, of course. And uh, I believe uh, Abraham Lincoln said, you know what they say about men with big hats? <laughs> Uh, this from Darren in Nova Scotia uh, said, Have you kept up on the US election while you were away? I hear Donald Trump may be running. Is this actually true? Uh, I mean, it does feel like some kind of extended prank. Well, yeah, it, it, it felt like either an extended prank or, you know, like a book tour that slightly got out of control. And, you know, early on, it felt like he might be looking for, you know, a dignified way out so he could have fun and then just leave and not actually have to be president. But now, I think he wants it. And I think he's, you know, close to maybe get... It's hard to even say this out loud. <laughs> and, but yeah, I guess um, I, this is potentially could happen. So I think we all need to plan accordingly. <laughs> uh, sit by your radios and await further instructions. Do not... I mean, I've certainly... I've certainly put myself out there, Andy. I don't know if his first order of business would be to deport me from the country. <laughs> but, I mean, he's not said anything after that piece, which is slightly bizarre. Right. He hasn't threatened any kind of lawsuit, despite the fact HBO has dragon money. <laughs> so, I, I don't... I'm, I'm kind of waiting nervously for his first response, and I think it might be, once he's sworn into office, he's just pointing to the airport, saying, <laughs> off you go. <laughs> Like a cricket umpire, on your way back to the pavilion, you little shit. <laughs> well, I'll have a word with the picture house in York, see if they can take us. <laughs> um, uh, I don't, now, I'd, it does. Like, it does. It did initially seem like a prank, and but it, how likely is it that America will now extend that prank for four years, or even eight years? Or oh, he's Trump. He's not going to be happy until he's done longer than Roosevelt. But both of them put together—that's a solid twenty years of President Trump. I mean, it, can it can it really happen? Well, that's the question that, you know, everyone needs to wrestle with. But, I mean, the, the short answer is, yeah, yeah this, could, this could actually happen. Right. Andy, they, 
uh, America could elect its first king. Right. And I mean, how much is this Ben Carson's fault? Because I, I believe by you know by him running, he's almost made Trump look not not quite as. Well, I don't think you can put it all on Ben Carson, Andy. I think this is really has to land squarely on the feet of people who are voting for him. I think people are very angry with politics, and they're not wrong to be angry about that. You know, by having candidates foisted upon them, it's, there's something pretty depressing about the front runners being Bush and Clinton at one point, <laughs> seeing as we have danced that dance before. But this is an overcorrection. <laughs> this is swerving to avoid a duck and instead just ploughing a car straight into a ditch.